Hi, I'm Thomas. Welcome back. Our topic is integration. This lesson is about improper integrals. We're dealing with an improper integral when some part of a definite integral becomes infinite. And we'll be looking at two cases. In one case, an integral goes infinite horizontally, and that's obvious because one of the limits of integration is infinity. We could also see a scenario, we won't in our examples, but we could see a scenario in which an integral is going towards negative infinity. In the second case, we're dealing with an integral which vertically approaches infinity. And this case isn't always obvious. We need to be looking for this case. In our examples, we'll see how to identify a situation in which an integral tends toward vertical infinity. The concept in this case is that when we input one of our limits of integration into an integral which is rational, and there's a variable in the denominator, such that the input of the limit of integration results in that denominator becoming zero, then we're dealing with a situation that is vertical infinity. And we need to apply our algorithm for dealing with improper integrals in such a situation. Notice in my general rule, I'm showing a lower limit of integration of zero. That's not always required for a situation in which an integral is improper in the sense that it's approaching vertical infinity. The idea is that whatever value is either in the lower or the upper limit, if one of those limits causes the denominator of the function to become zero, you're dealing with an improper integral. We'll work through three examples of evaluating improper integrals. When we get to the end of each evaluation, we'll either arrive at a quantity, which indicates the value of the integral, or we'll arrive at infinity, which indicates that the limit which is a part of our analysis, does not exist, which means that the area under the function we're evaluating for the given limits of integration is infinite. Now let's work through our examples. Number one, the integral from two to infinity of the function one over quantity one minus x squared with respect to x. Looking at our algorithm, step one, identify improper limit of integral. That's the upper limit of infinity. Step two, express the integral as a limit. So now my notation is going to be that this integral equals the limit as c approaches infinity. And notice at the top center of the screen, I'm dealing with the first integration rule with an upper limit of infinity. I'm going to change my limits of integration. I'll keep the non-infinity limit, the two, I'll change the infinity limit to c, and I continue with my function 1 over 1 minus x to the power of 2 with respect to x. Step 3, evaluate the integral. Equals the limit as c approaches infinity. Now, the function 1 over 1 minus x squared is the same as, I'll make a notation out here to the right, this is the same as 1 minus x all to the power of negative 2. So that makes it a bit easier to integrate in that format. And we are working with then the integral of 1 minus x to the power of negative 2. So first I will change the exponent of 1 minus x to negative 1, and I will multiply the expression by 1 over the new exponent, which is negative 1, and finally multiplying by 1 over the inner function derivative. The inner function is 1 minus x, and that derivative is negative 1. My limits of integration are 2 to c. Continuing my evaluation, I can do some simplification. The limit as c approaches infinity of 1 divided by negative 1 in the front of the expression is negative 1, and another 1 divided by negative 1 at the end of the expression is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 leaves us with 1, so 1 times anything is simply that anything. 1 minus x to the power of negative 1 with our limits of 2 and c. 
Continuing with evaluation, the limit as c approaches infinity. Now I'm going to input my limits of integration. So I'll begin with 1 minus replacing the x with c to the power of negative 1 minus 1 minus with an input of 2 to the power of negative 1 which simplifies to the limit as c approaches infinity of 1 over 1 minus c minus 1 minus 2 is negative 1 to the power of negative 1 is 1 over negative 1 and step 4 evaluate the limit when I evaluate the limit my limit notation will go away I'm going to input what the limit is approaching into any c value that is still in my expression and then evaluate the result so the first term 1 over 1 minus c as c approaches infinity 1 minus c approaches negative infinity and 1 over negative infinity is approaching 0 and disappears from our analysis the second term minus 1 over negative 1 minus negative 1 or plus 1 is what remains and our answer is 1 an interesting observation at this point is that if we were to graph this function and consider visually how to calculate the area under the curve the curve would continue infinitely to the right so we might logically think well if the curve continues infinitely and never touches the x-axis then the area under the curve must be infinite but in fact it's not the length of the function is infinite but the area under the function has a finite value and that value is 1 this ends part 1 of the lesson when we continue in part 2 we'll look at improper integrals examples 2 and 3